Hey, I'm Lucas, a photographer and filmmaker from the UK, and today we're gonna to be going through my photography workflow. First of all, for all of you who haven't seen my photography before, I primarily take nature and outdoor photos with a bit of car photography mixed in too. I've been doing it for three years and over that time, my photography workflow has evolved and changed into what it is now. To really understand the whole process, we have to take it right back to the beginning. We're gonna take some photos. You may have heard the phrase shoot for the edit before. It's primarily used in a filmmaking context most of the time, but I think it's a really useful concept that you can use um, in your photography as well. And it's an approach I like to take um, when I'm out taking my photos. Essentially, the way you take your photos is influenced by how you know you'll edit them later. It can be really handy for making your workflow work more seamlessly when you get to the editing stage. For example, I like to shoot between a third and half a stop underexposed, since the preset I mainly use for the base of my images tends to work best like that. I also tend to use quite a fixed white balance, often around 5,500 Kelvin, and I rarely fiddle about with it, since once again, it suits the edit I'll most likely put on it later. There are a few other things here and there, such as bracketing in harsh light, and shooting in a portrait orientation for Instagram. But these workflow helpers are very individual and depend on your approach. You'll maybe find some that fit you better and some that won't work at all for you. I don't always follow these as strict rules. I often find myself breaking them in certain situations where I need to take a different approach. And that's all good. It's essential to experiment with new techniques and methods. So the next stage is importing my photos for editing. I don't do anything too fancy here. I pop in my SD card and SSD drive where I store all of my raw photos and simply use Lightroom to import my shots into the library that's held on that SSD. Once my shots are in, the first stage of trimming down the shots, the good ones from the bad ones, begins. I'll flick through each individual photo and I press the number five key on my keyboard to rate it as a five star image if it's one I want to edit. This helps me remove all the shots that I don't want to edit or duplicates, etc. After that, I'll set the filter to five stars and Lightroom will remove all the images that aren't a five star rating. So that means I can focus on the shots that I've selected. I'll then go through the shots one by one, beginning the edit using my signature Lightroom preset, which you can also use and download from the link in my description. It's an excellent base to start off my edit from. I'll often then correct my exposure, shadows and highlights where I see necessary. Then I essentially go down through all the Lightroom adjustments and have a little play to see what I'd like to change to help make the image look as best as possible in my eyes. Once I'm happy with my initial edit, I take my images into Photoshop. This is where the photos genuinely come alive. Here I start by duplicating my base layer and use the healing brush tool to remove any distractions that are taking away from the purpose of my image. Sometimes this will require the clone stamp tool, however, most of the time the healing brush does a perfectly good job. And then I can start my dodge and burn stage. This can really transform your images. Without going into too much depth because every shot is different, I burn the shadows and dodge the highlights to increase the contrast between them. I find this helps bring more layers and depth into your images. The final step is to add a Gaussian blur and a high pass. This is a technique I learned from Peter McKinnon's videos and I pretty much use it all the time. I've set up an automation to simply click this little play button and go through all the steps. It just gives your image that little extra pop and for me, brings the whole image together. I'll leave the link down in the description to the original Peter McKinnon video where you can just see the whole technique and how to do it. The image just needs exporting now, so I save the picture, it pops up in Lightroom. I then export my images as JPEGs with a max long edge of 2,500 pixels, which is plenty in my experience for Instagram. These usually get saved to my SSD in a folder, simply named somewhat appropriately. Often I get a little bit random with it. A quick extra step that I've added into my photography workflow this year is taking that final image back into Photoshop. Here I have my latest Instagram grid layout and I can bring the image in to make sure it fits well with the rest of my feed. Or I can plan my feeds for later down the line to make sure that they look cohesive and professional. It massively helps to keep organized. I'll then airdrop the photo to my phone and I'm ready to post on Instagram. So that's my photography workflow. It may dip and change over time, but that is the core steps that I take for each one of my shots. 
How does it differ to yours? Let me know in the comments section down below. And of course, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. I'd really appreciate that. And uh, then you'll never miss one of my other videos. More videos are coming along the way. I know there's been quite a little bit of a break between the last few, but um, I can assure you there are more coming. And since you're down there, you may as well drop a like for the old algorithm. I'd really appreciate it. Uh, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.